It is a fiduciary within Islam that Muslims must convey this message. Even if it's a single verse from the Quran, they have the obligation to do it. And as long as Muslims did this, they were successful. For over a thousand years, Islam reigned very successfully. The education, the science, the medicine, many of the things we take advantage of today find their roots in the scientific disciplines within the Islamic empire. Going all the way back to Islamic Spain, to Egypt, Morocco, some of the oldest universities on this earth still in existence today and we don't even know about that. Here in the West we just, we just don't know. There's no clue. Yet there's a verse. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyul insana taqur rabbukum Allah di khalaqakum min nafsin wahidin wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa bitha rijalan kathirin wa nisa. Now I'll stop there because the next one it talks to the believers as well. To talk a lot. But it says, O oh mankind. Now if it's addressed to mankind, how could you as Muslims not tell mankind this message? How? And wonder why you're having so much trouble in the world today. Don't you believe that it's Allah that's giving you the problems? Huh? And why? Because you haven't done what you're supposed to do. You don't have to convert anybody. In fact, you can't. Allah doesn't even want you to do that. La ikraha vadin. But he did ask you to deliver a message and you didn't do it. These people don't know that. Let me translate it the best I can. Not much in translation, but I'll give it a shot. O mankind, fear your guardian Lord who created all of you from a single person, Adam, and from him brought forth his mate. And from these two brought forth many, many peoples, men and women. And in the same recitation, the Quran, chapter 49, Surah Al Hujurat, Allah says again that He's the one who created all of us from a single, and from the single brought forth His mate. And from these two, talking about Adam and Eve, He brought forth many tribes and nations and made you different from each other. Why? Who in this room, not Muslim, knows why God created us different in these tribes? And you don't know that unless you know what Allah said in the Quran. He said, so you'll recognize each other. Not that you'll have an one-upmanship over somebody else because you're white and they're black, or you're brown and they're yellow, or you're tall and they're short, but because... Allah, Almighty God, deemed it to be that way. But never that there would be any of this racism. Something very hated to Allah to the extent, in the Arabic it's called asabiya. It is so hated to Allah because it's a form of oppression. And Allah hates oppression and He hates when people oppress. And those who are oppressors are called wrongdoers in Arabic. Volimim and dhulm is so hated to Allah. And a lot, by the way, a lot of wrongdoing of this nature we do to ourselves. La ilaha illa anti in kuntum There are many stories from the Quran that give us ways to deal with the problems we have today. But even the Muslims are not reading their own book and not applying it. Instead they're listening to some nahid telling them that Islam says this and Islam says that. Some even are listening to non-Muslim sources telling them your religion says you should go out and kill so many people and you'll go to paradise and have 70 dancing virgins or stuff like this. What the heck is this? Show me the page in the Quran where it says this. This is nonsense. But if you imagine that there's a billion and a half people out there that are staying up all night long coming up with diabolical plots how to terminate the whole world and it's like... And nothing could be further from the truth. You've got a couple of folks out of several thousand who have bizarre ideas. No doubt about that. But that doesn't represent the rest of them, does it? It's the exception, isn't it? It's not the rule. But again, the Muslims are not making this clear to the general public. They're not. What's happening is there are Muslims who are standing up and saying the truth, but there's no vehicle to get the message out. Since, for instance, 
September the 11th, 2001, we've had so many of the scholars of Islam immediately releasing statements, sending faxes, and putting up websites totally condemning this action, totally uh, with the victims, saying that this is not anything to do with Islam, and whoever did this, these people have nothing to do with Islam. Uh, there's so many people have done that. Is that true or false? They, they have been doing it and doing it. But yet the common folk in the non-Muslim world don't know that. It's the responsibility of the Muslims to take a little bit out of that money that you're chasing after so hard every day and invest that so that folks can know and understand what's really going on. Regardless of what you think about me, and, and it really isn't important you stop and think about it, because I'm going to be gone tomorrow. I'll be somewhere else, inshallah. But regardless what your concept of me or any of the Muslims are today, think about the future of your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. Don't you want them to have a better life than what we have? We always say we want them to have a better life, but does that just mean money? Does it just mean I want them to have a bigger house, a bigger car? Is that what we meant? Because if it is, then we're wasting our time anyway. Because you can't control that. That's not in your hands to control. But for sure, it is in your hands to control the environment, what they're going to have tomorrow to grow up in. The common sense message of Islam, and then I'm done. This is it. Here you go. La ilaha illallah. La in Arabic means no. No, it negates, totally and absolutely denies. This is a heavy word, L-A-A -A in English, or Lam Alif in Arabic. La. You want to know what's La? Okay, what you do? Go to any Arab's house during the day. They got little children around there. And listen to what the mother's saying to the children. La, 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 la. Now you know what it means. They don't have to tell you more than that. <laughs> you know what mothers are saying when they... No, 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 no. It's clear. It's no. Second word I referred to earlier in the etymology of the word of law. It says Elah. And this means there is no God. There is no God. It means there is nothing worthy to be worshipped. La ilaha. Elah means with the exception of Allah. There are no gods beside God. There are no gods beside God. Does that sound familiar to some of the Christians, Jews that are with us today? Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Isn't that the first commandment? Isn't that what it says in Deuteronomy chapter 5? Isn't that what it says in Exodus chapter 20? I'm the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt in the house of bondage. You know no other God beside me. Thou shalt not have any other gods beside me. Is that what it says or not? La ilaha illallah. That is the most important part of Islam without which nobody in this room or in this country or on the planet can be a Muslim. True or false? You're being awful quiet today. La ilaha? Yeah, I know you know it. That's the message. There isn't any God worthy to be worshipped. Oh, there are gods out there. <laughs> People worshipping these idols, worshipping good luck charms, worshipping their, their amulets they carry around for good luck and... People that are looking to their horoscopes and wondering what the stars have in for them today, going to their medium to read their hand. <laughs> That's a funny one, isn't it? You want your hand red? How many of you remember that joke? You want your hand red? You hold it out, they paint it red. <laughs> but anyhow. <laughs> People worship money. Yes or no? There's even one country that on the money itself, you guys are playing around with your coins, right? <laughs> you doing that? Changing your coins out, yeah? Well, there is a country, and I've seen their bills, and it says right on the bill, 
that that's their God. It says right on it, in God we trust. All others pay cash. <laughs> the message the Muslims are supposed to be giving to the people is clear. That we worship the one only God that created the heavens and earth, the universe, in six days. That's what it says in the Quran. Who Allah khalaqa samawati wal ard fi sitta ayam thuma astawa ala arsh and then rose up above his throne. It's the same God that created human beings from Adam and Eve. It's the same God that brought the children of Israel out of Egypt and parted the water so that they could go across the Red Sea. The same God that drowned Pharaoh. The story is in the Quran. It's the same God that reinforced Suleiman, Solomon. The same God that created from a woman a baby. And this baby spoke from the cradle. This baby actually fulfilled prophecy. And it says in Quran that he was the Messiah. And Messiah is from the Hebrew mis and the Arabic mis that's what it says in the Quran and if you translate it to Kone Greek that's where you get the word Christos from which we derive the word Christ for which the city that we're in right now is named it's nothing but a translation and an interpolation of the word Christos which is translated from Messiah Messiah. And by the way, if you want to know what it really means, it means anointed. Because this is the verb. This is a demonstration of the verb right here. See what I'm doing? This is wiping, anointing. Because they used to use anointing oil made from olive oil, zaytun, put their fingers in that oil, and then when they had a king for Israel, they would anoint his forehead. And that was the ceremony, and that's what is being referred to in the Old Testament, that he will come, the anointed one, the Messiah, will come. And that's exa exactly who the son of Mary really was. He was that Messiah. And he did come, and he did miracles, and it's not over yet. Quran tells us real clear, he's not dead. If you think Jesus is dead... You don't understand Islam. Muslims know full well he's alive, he's with God, and he will be back in the last day. There are prophecies from Muhammad making it clear that eventually, before all things come to pass, before the end, that in fact, Muslims and Nasrani will join together to fight a common enemy. Who are the Nasrani? Anybody knows what that means? Christians. That's good news. That's really good news. I'm happy to hear it. Having been both, having understood both sides, I like this idea. It's a great concept. He did not predict that we would be attacking the Christians and Christians attacking us and blowing up the buildings. And it was, it's not. He said we would fight together against the common enemy.